views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Welcome back to the Ram with Coach Gately. Dom, it's a new week for Fordham Women's Basketball. The 8-10 schedule rolls on. Some more struggles within the past week that show the ebbs and flows of an 8-10 season. Yeah, they had that seven-game winning streak coming back. The last time we talked to Coach, which was on January 8th, they played against Richmond. They won. St. Louis won. VCU, they had a 12-point lead in that second quarter. Unfortunately, they couldn't get that. Only a three-point loss. And then Obviously, to date in last time, I was 72-50, two-game losing streak after that seven-game winning streak. Don, what are some of the things you've seen that have maybe led to those struggles? Maybe on the defensive effort. I know Coach is going to bring that up. We're going to talk to her in a second. But the defense and maybe the offense. In that VCU game, they only scored four points in that fourth quarter. So that's something we could touch on as well. Also, a couple of individuals. We could talk about their struggles. Some individuals who are getting a bit hotter. But we'll talk about all that and more with Coach. Coming up next, we'll look back. Emmanuel Barbari, Dominic Capone, now joined by Fordham Women's Basketball head coach Stephanie Gately. Coach, thanks for joining us again. Great to be here. Coach, so we were talking about some of the struggles lately. One thing I wanted to ask you heading in is every 8-10 schedule, there are some teams that you don't expect to be there at the end, and there are some teams that you expect to be there, and some kind of come out of the woodworks a little bit. So do you expect some of these ebbs and flows throughout the season where you have a week like last week where you don't have the results you expect? Yeah, I mean, the, the VCU was obviously really disappointing because we had, you know, a, a strong lead, and then we just, uh, third quarter, it was like the same as the week before against St. Louis, gave up 23 points, and just the defense went out the window. And then the fourth quarter, we couldn't score. And so it was kind of a double whammy. And, and we tried to tell the kids all along, like, to win games, you got to play 40 minutes. 40 minutes of defense because the St. Louis game, we were up five at half shooting 28%. So we can still be in games and, and sneak and steal games if we play defense. But if we don't play defense, we're in trouble. Since the last time we talked to you, your team's 2-2, two and two, like we mentioned. Going back to that Richmond game, which was the first game after our last episode, Bree Cavanaugh, 20 points, 12 rebounds, 7 assists. How impressed were you by her performance, and what allowed her to rack up that many assists? I mean, I think, you know, we have some good players, you know, supporting Bree. So I think, you know, even in that, if you look at the one run we, we made against uh, – DC went up 17. Bree only had two points in that run. You know, so, you know, we have other kids that can, you know, put the ball in the hoop, but, you know, Bree is also a facilitator. She's a willing passer. Um, I think, you know, I, I think her game, you know, can be more complete. I think she has the ability to be a much better defender. Uh, she's doing a really good job, an outstanding job on the boards, and I challenge her every day on that. But I think she's inching closer to being a more complete player, but I think there's still some work to be done. You referenced that game against VCU. You did what you wanted to defensively in that fourth quarter. Offensively, only four points. What did you see that went wrong during that fourth quarter? I just got stifled. I mean, we stopped sharing the ball. Everything was trying to create off, you know, to create off the dribble rather than, you know, just trusting in the offense. And and also with some bad decisions. We made some really crucial turnovers at crucial times. That just uh, that's really uncharacteristic of, of of our team. So, combination of not running offense and also not taking care of the ball. I know it's tough to win on the road. You guys beat St. Louis in St. Louis, but it was still a tough matchup. How did you guys come away with the victory, and why is it so tough to play in that arena? I just think on the road's tough in general. I, I think, you know, waking up in different beds, just everything. At a different gym, I think just the comfort level of being in your own gym is, is always different, I think. You know, and then it's a national TV game, and, you know, and, and then we faced adversity on the road with the trip, with the snow, and leaving a day early, and there were so many different obstacles, and I think I was so proud of the kids because we overcame obstacles to win there, and that senior class had not won at St. Louis. Well, speaking of national TV games, the Dayton one was also national TV, 72-50 loss. Is the players nervous when they're on national TV, or does that have any factor? I don't think so because we already had games on TV. I, I just think that we just didn't come to play. I just feel like we were hurt on both sides of the ball. I don't think our defense was there. I think we were inept on offense, uh, um, turned the ball over. I, I just feel like, you know, and as a coach, you know you always hit those games. Uh, it just was disappointing that we did it against one of the top teams in the conference. If you take the two last games out of the equation, that St. Louis game, a real uplifting win for the team. Zara Jillings, the late three-point play to lift you to the victory. What do you see as that play developed? 
Um, I thought Bree did a good job of keeping her head because they went zone. They started off in man, and then when they saw we were having an isolation for, Z, for, for Bree, they went zone. And she passed to Mary, and then Mary, you know, found Zara cutting. And, you know, Zara did a great job using her left hand on that play and, and not only making the shot but also completing it with a three-point play. So now puts pressure on them, you know, down three with us having three fouls or two fouls to give. So you have five seconds to score a three. It's difficult against a good defensive team. Now over to Dayton, 72 points allowed. You do only score 50. You always mention how defense can keep you in a game. Do you attribute that loss more to defense than the offense? Both. No, I, I don't think you can look at one thing there. I think it was both ends. I think, you know, defensively we were horrendous. I'm just going to speak honestly. Like, I broke down the tape, and typically when I show the team a tape, we, we have a – you know, we win. We have a decent amount of good, solid defensive possessions. I had 40 clips, and four were good. 40. Mm -hmm. And four were good. So that – is the signal right there. And then the offense, again, didn't score, but also, you know, we, we just, again, just tried to try to stay out, you know, go, kind of go out of what we do well. Different, you know, different players trying to force things that weren't there and not trusting each other, not trusting the offense. So it was a combination of both things. Sticking with that day in game, their starting point, point guard, Arion Bradshaw, only played three minutes, had four fouls, and then Shaquille Fowler came off the bench 35 minutes, had 15.6 rebounds, three assists. As a coach, is that hard to game plan for someone that wasn't in the starting lineup? Well, we had game plan for what they both do. They're both penetrating point guards. So we had game plan for that. Unfortunately, we just didn't do what we were, we were taught, you know. And that's the thing I try to explain to the kids is, you know, I spend a lot of time on tape. So do my assistants. So our, I don't really have an off day. My off day is six to eight hours to ten hours of tape to find ways to beat teams. So one of our game plans was keeping, keeping her in front. We didn't do that. And so that's something that, you know, obviously we're going to learn from and hope, hopefully correct in the future. Your team's in such a groove to start conference play at 3-0, and then go through a little bit of a rough patch. When your team goes from such a high to such a low, what's your message to them to try to keep them focused? Be tougher. You know, and the message today was stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop making excuses. I don't want to hear anything about the officials. I don't want to, you know, be tougher. You know, like our slogan has always been passion with the purpose and pound the rock. Like, to me, against Dayton, we didn't play hard and we didn't play smart. So if you don't have either of them, you're not going to win. So with us, we had to really we have to take a look at ourselves, including myself. I always tell the team it starts with me. I got to look and see what I can do better, and then it falls on them as well. All right, Coach, thanks for joining us. And looking back at the last week that's been, we'll have Coach again to look ahead. But next, we're going to join two former Ram players instead of two current Ram players this week and two special guests in Abigail Corning and Samantha Clark. Stay right with us. Heading over to the lineup, and we're pleased to be joined by two special guests this week, two former Ram players that used to be part of the lineup, and Abigail Corning to our right. She is Fordham Class of 2014, current director of basketball operations, and a 2014 A-10 champ. Same with Samantha Clark, but she is Fordham Class of 2016. Guys, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. So, Abigail, let's start with you. Lauren Holden just became part of the exclusive 1,000-point club at Fordham. How important was it when you accomplished it and were part of that club, and what did you say to her after the accomplishment? I told her, welcome to the club. I mean, we, we would have liked to have a win under our belts with her accomplishment, but um, looking at and her only being the 21st um, women's basketball player to reach the club, it really is an elite status to be making, and, and I'm proud of her. I mean, she's put in the work just like I did back when I was a player, and uh, she deserves to be there. Now... Speaking of Lauren Holden, again, you lead, I believe, eight, uh, the Fordham Rams in minutes played all time with 4,156. You're two minutes behind that. Do you guys ever get on each other about that? Yeah. No, I'm actually didn't know about it. Oh, you didn't know that? Ryan put that in as a Too game. That's such, such a tight race. Man. Ryan, you look shout out. Um, also, Lauren Holden now, 246 minutes away from beating your record. Have she talked to you about that? Or, you didn't even know that, so. No, I mean, good for her. I mean, she deserves all the minutes she's on the court, so we're looking forward to her finally beating me in that. So this is basically a two-part question for the both of you. You're one and two on that list. 
What goes into a minute workload like that and being able to sustain that throughout a four-year college career? A lot of time in ice baths, that's for <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Thankful for our athletic training staff. But, no, just being able to be mentally prepared to just be fatigued and try to play through it so that you can maintain your, um, like, mind out there. That's big. Um, and then just all the water and Gatorade you can get during the timeouts that you get. Um, trusting coach's game plan that, that she'll take you out if she needs to, but um, you just want to be out there, so you just got to push through. Yeah, like I said, she deserves to be out there from my senior year, her freshman year. She was on the court a lot, so she's learning from a young age that her minutes are precious, and she knew how to work through it then. Now, speaking of Coach Gately, you guys both played under her. Has any current player come up to you and ask for, I don't know, advice uh, by playing under Coach Gately? Or I guess that's a two-parter again. Sometimes they say little things. We we know her her quirks and her ins and outs and her preferences. So um, just a lot of little things. But coach is very clear when she communicates her game plan and what she needs to accomplish from preseason all the way through the season. So um, and she's open to questions for herself. So a lot of times the answer is go ask coach yourself. You're going to get a better answer that way. And uh, she has such an open door policy that they usually get their answer. I mean, Abigail said it all. I think um, a lot of the post players came to me in the beginning just with terminology and things like that, just figuring out their way and what needed to be done. Sam was able to get four years under coach. You got three years under coach. What's the difference between Coach Gately and any other coach you've been coached by in your life? Just her care for her players and, and her support staff and everyone around her. Um, and it's super genuine, uh, which is a lot of times you get a, a front-facing person who, who seems nice and bubbly, and, and you don't always get that behind closed doors and, and coaches the same person throughout. So that's really big. Um, she just always stays positive and really just treats people well. And I guess this is a more of a question for you because you had Kathy Andrews as your head coach your freshman year. How was the transition going into your sophomore year, and was it difficult going to Coach Gately? Difficult in the sense of uh, there was there were different, different demands, styles. yeah, different mm -hmm. styles, but a, a big breath of fresh air. Um, <laughs> we needed that change, and it was just such a better atmosphere to be in. Uh, we wanted to go to practice. We wanted to get better. We wanted to be out there, and um, that just makes a big difference in a team. Now, Sam, you had the privilege of actually playing with two of the Rams seniors uh, during your senior year when they were freshmen. Any advice you passed down when you were a senior to kind of lead them to where they are today? I just tell them to keep looking back. It was a rough year, but um, a lot of learning was done. So when things are hard now, I say just look back. You've grown from that year and just use your lessons then and we'll use them now. Now, speaking of Coach Gately again, do you see a difference in her coaching style or anything surrounding her from the first time you guys met her till now? Um, I would say she has a little bit more patience. Uh, she's seen everything that she has to, so nothing surprises her. She doesn't ever get caught off guard, really. Um, and then when she does, it's kind of a surprise to everybody. So I would say that. I mean, it takes a while to kind of implement your program, but... Now she kind of just knows what she, what she needs to do. Same for you, Sam. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Both A-10 chance, which was a significant accomplishment considering the lull that the program had been in. This year's team has a chance to get back to that stage. What does the team have to do to get back to that stage? Listen to coach <laughs> and put in the extra work that needs to be done and, um, you know, study the scout and film on their own if they can. Just any little preparations they can do, whether it's working out with an assistant coach or it's getting extra time with Coach Gately. Um, it, those little things separate champions from second place. What about you, Sam? I think accountability. I remember when we were playing, Abigail always being on me about the little things, and those things are really big things. So just the captains and everyone holding each other accountable on the court really makes a big difference. Sam, Abigail, thanks for coming on. And Thank they'll you. stay on. Coming up next, we'll go on the court with Jimmy Sullivan. They'll go through defensive drills and get into the mindset of a Coach Gately-led team. That's coming up next.
Welcome back to The Ram with Coach Gately. We're back with our On the Court segment. I'm Jimmy Sullivan, pleased to be joined by a full house of Rams, Stephanie Gately, former players Sam Clark, and Abigail Corning. Guys, we're going to talk about, Coach, one of your favorite points of emphasis, and that's defense. Well, we have a couple terms, and uh, it's great having these these former players there because they, they both kind of epitomize two of the different terms we use. One of our terms we use when we're going against a team with like an Abigail that's, you know, a prolific scorer and we want to shut them down is our, is our tag defense. And it's something that, you know, your only responsibility is not let that person touch the ball. So maybe Abigail, you can take them through that a little bit. Yeah, it's an interesting defense because coach always drills into your head, you know, be on the helpline, be on the helpline. But this one, you just have to worry about your man and you don't have any help responsibilities. Wherever she goes, you go. You deny her the ball as best as possible. And uh, what we try to do on ball screens, if she's, a, if she's the ball handler in a ball screen, is you try to double it. You try to just flood the ball away from her as quickly as possible just to try to cut down her points per game and, and really kind of mess up the offensive strategy of the opponent. And we're kind of fortunate because Val Naeem is on our staff and she's able to practice. Abigail and Sam can't practice because of their, because of their capacities on the staff. But, uh, that's something that we can kind of simulate that when we're getting ready to play a team. So we do, like Abigail said, we might do a drill where we literally trap and, and then everybody kind of gets into rotation. So that's one of the things we'll do against, you know, from a guard standpoint. How much of a priority is it, I know you talk about being up against a prolific scorer, how worried do you get then when you do that against maybe having some of the other pieces of the offense starting to get going and then getting hot? Well, I think like any game, you got to pick your poison. You know, what, how do you want to be beat? You know, like, and we tell the kids all the time, I don't expect us to be perfect. I know we're going to get beat on defense, but let's dictate how we get beat. So let's dictate what shot we're going to give up. We're going to give up a shot, but what shot is it going to be? So if it's going to be, if we're playing a team that has a really good score, we're, we want somebody secondary to make that shot. And then when you, when you do have that, and I know you guys both played for the team a few years ago, how, is it, how have you guys seen it maybe change at all, or has it mostly stayed the same, that sort of attitude where you try to stop the other team's best score? I would say it's, it's stayed the same. It's consistent. Coach is very consistent. But um, we're really a team defense-oriented team. Um, like I said, helpline. This is really only when you have one leading scorer that, that she puts up like 25 a night, and you want to – cut it down you know she's she's still going to score it happens um but if she only scores 10 that other 15 has to come from some of her support players but also jimmy just to go into the point that abigail just made because sam's to my left i used to argue the point to the coaches all the time until sammy's senior year she wasn't on the all defensive team and i and we were number one in the conference on defense and I, my argument was we are not the same defensive team unless sam clark is on the team Sam was the best help defender I've ever coached. Like, she just understood angles. She was what we consider our traffic cop, where she's cleaning up everything. So she, she, she might be able to talk to you about that. And, Coach, it seems like your biggest thing is, is defense. You, you seem to love defense, whether it's you're talking here or in other interviews. I, I always, almost always seem to hear you talking about defense. How did that get drilled into you, where you viewed that as just being so important? I think at a very young age, one of my mentors was Dick Bernhard. He's since passed away, but he was, he was a disciple of, of Bobby Knight. And so I think at a very young age, I kind of was around it, and that's kind of the way I was taught. So because that's the way I was taught, that's kind of, the, you know, kind of how you mature as, as a coach. And, guys, when, when you played for coach, how important was it? Obviously, defense being very important to you guys on the team, but I guess, Sam, I'll start with you on this one. How much did coach drill the importance of defense to you? She talked about it a little bit, but maybe if you could just go into a little bit more detail as to how important defense was when you were on the team. I mean, it's been a priority, always been number one. Um, a lot of our drills and practice are surrounding defense, and we always are correcting defensive positioning and help defense and stuff like that. Abigail, would you agree with that? I would agree, yeah. And it's all, like I said, team. And Sam was great. I was not the fastest defender, but when I got beat, I knew Sam was going to have my back and be there and help. And I had to do my part to rotate it within the defense. And um, it's just those breakdown drills and practice that really help hammer it home. Yeah, and Coach, for you in practice during the week, how much time do you spend on defense? And then how do you also keep a balance? Because I know you love to focus on defense, but there's also the other end of the ball. How do you maintain that balance? balance between offense and defense. And it's funny you said it because, you know, we do what's called the Cheney chart after Coach John Cheney. And Coach Cheney called me this week, and he had seen our St. Louis game, and he had said how well we played defensively and how well we took care of the ball. And he said, you got to spend the majority of your time on defense, which we do. I'd probably say it's a 70-30 break. But to be honest, you're practicing your offense against your defense, so you're really getting the same time. But really, if you were talking about the drill breakdown, there's more drill breakdown from a, d a defensive standpoint just because you want the kids to understand 
where your bread and butter is. You know, this, this is what, if you go offense 80% of the time, they're going to think your emphasis is on offense. We know we have scores. We know we have kids can put the ball in the basket. And we know we're getting enough time from the offensive standpoint. But details are super important defensively, so we spend a lot of time on the details. And then, guys, I'll get you out of here on this one, Sam and Abigail. If you had any advice to some of the current players, I know you guys played with a couple of the seniors who are on the team now. Sam, I'll start with you on this one. If you had any advice for the current players, what would that be, especially defensively? I think just buy in. I, I see a lot that we try to do our own thing, but Coach has been doing this for a long time. She knows what works, and we've seen the success it has. I would say don't be outworked. That was always my mantra as a player, and um, those loose balls should be ours, and you should just always be going as hard as you can. Abigail Corning, Sam Clark, and of course, Fordham Rams head coach Stephanie Gately. Guys, thank you so much for your time. We'll have more with Coach Gately after this. We'll be right back. We built a media network for you. Bronxnet TV. Come learn in your new state-of-the-art studios at Lehman College. At Mercy College. And coming soon to the South Bronx in the hub. Inspire with your stories, culture, history. Your Bronx on Bronxnet. Engage with us. Connect with us at your channels and at bronxnet.tv. Learn, engage, inspire. Bronxnet TV. From the Bronx to the world. <laughs> Bronxnet. <laughs> Time to look ahead with Coach. Great job by Jimmy on that previous segment. Coming up, Fordham looks to kind of right this skid going up against URI and Davidson in back-to-back -back games. First, a trip to URI, Coach. What did you see from URI in last year's meeting? Really talented. I mean, they're just a team that they, they've added to the talent. They didn't lose much to graduation. And uh, they added a transfer from Syracuse, who, who's an explosive athlete. Um, a lot of talent. It'll be a great challenge. VCU, a team that kind of evenly matched up with your team uh, in a previous game, they took it to URI last game, 74-39. What do you see from VCU's approach that enabled their success? Well, VCU's a really good defensive team, but then they also matched it with they, they, they got hot, you know. So when you can be a really good defensive team and, and add points to it, that's kind of like us. Like when we're on, on, on our game defensively and shoot well, pretty much we're going to win that game handily. Um, and I think that's exactly what VCU did. Now Davidson is was preseason ranked 11th. They're now third in the A10. Do you watch or look at the preseason uh, rankings when you go into a game, or more into A10 play? Not in the really. Beginning? I'm looking at the current and how the you know the current you know record and how they're playing. And you know Davidson's playing really well. Uh, I think she's done an outstanding job. They have a young group. Um, you know they graduated a really good player, but they have a lot of good players back. And so I think you know with a new coach and a new system, I think they've adapted well and they're playing with a lot of confidence. Now I'm gonna go back to that preseason poll. Why do you think the coaches put them at 11th and they're at third? What do you, th what do you think they're at, more towards the bottom or do you think they can be a contender at four and one in the A-10 as of right now? I think anybody's a contender. I gotta be honest, I don't pay any attention to preseason. You mm -hmm. know, I just, you know, that goes out the window. Um, I never really put a whole lot to it. You know, to me it's, you know, there's a lot of good teams. I think anybody can beat anybody. Like you said, you know, like UMass ju just went and beat Davidson at Davidson, you know, so like anybody can beat anybody on any given day. So we take no team lightly, and I would be I would be surprised at all whoever would win the conference this year, and, and I think we're more than capable of doing it. Speaking of anybody being anybody, last year Super Bowl Sunday played Rhode Island, and Nicole Jorgensen gave you guys a tough time on your home floor. What made her such a tough matchup that kind of turned that into maybe a trap game? You know, and you're right. That was a, that was a tough matchup, and that was a tough trap game. Is is just that you know she 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 got her confidence. She got on a roll. You know, she made a couple shots, and then and then she won the ball. It's like it's kind of like when Bree when we played at St. Louis. When 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 a kid kind of gets hot and they're in that zone, one you want to keep feeding them, and, and two they don't think anything can stop them. They kind of almost got that like Superman mentality, and so I think she had that. I think she's got that kind of mentality. Now you got Rhode Island on the 24th, Davidson on the 27th, LaSalle after that on the road. These are three winnable games, I would say. Coming off the two-game losing streak, how important is these three games? I don't even look to three games. I look at one. You know, all I'm looking at right now is focus on Rhode Island. That, that's the number one game. That's the number one focus. Uh, they're a talented team, and we got to play them there, so we got to be focused to play for 40 minutes. How do you get your team kind of back on track ahead of that Rhode Island game? Demand. You get what you demand. So, like, went over that tape against Dayton and wasn't real happy with the defense, and so we got we to get ourselves back focused defensively. And 
Like offensively, it will take care of itself. You know, like I said before, you know, we didn't shoot well against St. Louis and still won that game. You can win games without shooting well. You're not going to win games without playing defense. So we got to get right back on, right back on track from a defensive standpoint. Now, Brie Kavanaugh, she struggled shooting the ball in her recent games. What have you seen from her, if anything, that she is struggling with? Um, just balance on her shot. I think sometimes she's rushing a lot, trying to make quick decisions. A big thing I tell the kids all the time is watch what the defense does. You know, sometimes we make up our mind what shot we're going to get, and, and really the defense will dictate what our shot is. If they're going to run at us, we go by. If they're going to sit off us, we have the jump shot. So a lot of it's just reads. And I think, you know, right now you're in conference play and everybody knows you. So, like, now it's going to be harder. And now Bree's got to, you know, trust and rely on her teammates as well. And she's a willing passer, so I don't have any doubt that she'll do it. And I'll continue to challenge her about getting on the offensive glass because that's something that she can do as well. With shooting struggles in mind, Kendall Haramaya, double figures in only one of her last 12 games. She had five double-figure games in the first seven games of the season. Is that just a rotational switch? or you, Have you seen something different in her approach? You know, it's, it's she, she's as much as mystery to me as she is to you. You know, like the same thing I keep saying is like, you know, when practice she just, I mean, the one game against against St. Louis, I'm like, stop rushing. Everything's rush, 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 rush. I'm like, watch the defense. And I, you know, I had our video coordinator do a, a highlight tape of her of the first few games to show her what she's capable of doing. So it's a mystery to me. A lot of it is just, you know, Kendall, you know, understanding of just b b being patient and being confident. And is Kendall kind of okay with not being on more of the offensive side? Because she did have that 16-rebound game against St. Louis and focusing on defense. How do you instill that into her as well? Oh, that, that never faces Kendall. You know, Kendall's never one that's been wrapped up in points or wrapped up in statistics. She, you know, she just wants to do the best job she can. So I don't think that's ever been an issue. But for us to be successful, I think Kendall needs to give us something offensively. What have you seen from those two players in practice this week? Well, today was the first day back at it. I mean, we got on them pretty hard, you know, demanded of them. We told them we were going to do that, you know, like they got to be able to respond to, you know, the challenges. And this is, we've hit an adverse situation, and I think great teams respond to adversity. Coach, thanks for your time. Good luck this week. Thanks, guys. I also want to say it's your birthday in three days, right? Don't remind me. At this uh, age, you don't remind me. <laughs> I, like I, it, get a win for your birthday. Yeah, yeah, get a win for your birthday. Thank you. That's the motivation. <laughs> All right, so a special thanks to Coach for joining us again and Abigail Corning, Samantha Clark for joining us in two of our segments. The Rant with Coach Gately has been a production of WFUV Sports in association with Fordham Athletics and Brockstead TV.